we can get it going tonight with one of the two most important free agents on the market this offseason. And that's the Japanese pitcher, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He was officially posted on Monday, opening that 45-day window in which he can now sign with any major league club. There are no shortage of suitors. It seems like every big market team would like to have him, and that includes the New York Mets. So let's get it going right there, Anthony. What is the latest as you know it? when it comes to Yamamoto. Sure, well, it's as you just said, right? There's a 45-day window that open and takes them to January 4th. What I'm hearing is it probably isn't going to take that long. Uh, I would guess that Yamamoto signs probably before Christmas. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of teams in on it, but once you get down to the nitty gritty, it's probably gonna come down to those big market teams, right? The Mets, the Yankees, the Dodgers. These are the teams that can pay him top market dollar, which I think Yamamoto will command. So he's obviously going to meet with these teams over the coming weeks, he'll make his decisions. One other thing that I heard, unlike Shohei Otani, and there have been some rumors to the contrary on this, that Yamamoto might prefer a West Coast team. That's not the case at all. He's open to whatever. He's been playing the last nine years in Osaka in Japan, which is a very similar city, both in size and, and culture to New York. So it's a fit. It's a fit on a lot of levels. We'll see if the Mets are ultimately the top bidder. We'll see if he wants to come here. But it is a marriage that does make a lot of sense. I think Tony had touched on one of the things, you know, what everybody's hearing. There are so many things <laughs> we're hearing about this pitcher and what his preferences might be and what team he might want to go to, East Coast versus West Coast. Does he want to play with another Japanese star on the same team? Is he buddies with, you know, the, with the Red Sox, with Yoshida, a former teammate? Does that mean he want to go to Boston? Does, say, does he want to go play with Senga, who's been recruiting him, supposedly? So... I've covered a lot of these posting things going all the way back to Daisuke Matsusaka, and you hear a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of sifting through, and there's only one person that knows where he's going right now or thinks he knows where he's going, and that's Yamamoto. And aside from that, he's going to keep his options open, obviously, at this point. He's going to get a boatload of money, guys. We're talking about upwards of $200 million at this point, it looks like. So that we know. Tons of money, and he's going to play in the major leagues. Other than that, I think it's pretty wide open among some of the big market teams we've talked it's about. It's going to be very interesting. As I mentioned, Todd Zeal's going to join us, and he does right now. Uh, Todd, what about you? Where do you think Yamamoto is from a priority standpoint when it comes to the Mets this offseason? Uh, I think he's got to be priority number one now. Now that the Manager has been chosen, and David Stearns has had an opportunity to meet and greet, um, you know, the front office people and kind of get uh, that first priority out of the way. I think the number one priority for the Mets is pitching, and there's no better pitching prospect on the market right now than Yamamoto. And I think there has been, um, you know, a, a lot of conjecture, at least, that this is a fit for this guy, that Senga may have already been recruiting him, that there is – uh, as you guys talked about, it's not like um, some other guys that may come to a big market team like New York and be awestruck. This guy's already a rock star in Japan. And as Dave said, um, Osaka is very much like playing in New York. So I think those barriers are not um, you know, a factor. I think the factor is going to be how much money he gets paid and where he thinks he can win. I think those are the two places, the two things that may uh, sway him, but right now, priority number one for sure. So one of the things you mentioned, Dave mentioned as well, the fact that Kodai Singer, you know he is recruiting Yamamoto to come to the Mets. They've got a long relationship over in Japan. I wonder from a, a player's standpoint here, Todd, what sort of an impact does that have on you when somebody that you know and you're comfortable with and you see had success with the Mets last year the way he did, what sort of an impact that can have on you as you make your decision? I think it makes a difference. I don't know that it's going to be the deciding factor, but I think it's always important to have some level of familiarity, especially, um, you know, it's different. That's another difference between going from, uh, you know, one team to another team in the major leagues or maybe back when I played going from one league to another, might want to get uh, some insight from somebody that I might have played with somewhere else. But this is going from, you know, Japan to the U.S. and the insight that he could get from somebody like Kodai Senga the ball, the crowd, the travel, the five days versus six days, all of those things could be valuable input for a guy 
is trying to make his decision where he wants to go and what environment might suit him best. I think it's an interesting point that you bring up there about the baseball. We know that Kodai Singh, it was an adjustment for him because it's a smaller baseball in Japan. And Singh is a, a bigger guy than Yamamoto is. What sort of an impact uh, that may be for him, what sort of adjustment it may be for him here in the States and playing in the big leagues. I, I wonder, Anthony, do you think this can be a successful offseason for the Mets if they do not sign Yamamoto? Well, they can sign Shohei Otani. Yes, that would be. I, I, I think part of the reason why Yamamoto is, is such an important piece for the Mets to sign is because of this assumption around the industry that the Mets are not necessarily in that top flight of teams pursuing Otani, that Otani might not even want to play on the East Coast at all, which would take the Mets, obviously, out of the running. So if you assume that the Mets won't get Otani and you assume that they won't get Yamamoto, it's going to be tough. One thing that David Stearns did say at the GM meetings is that there is a viable path as opposed to, say, building out a rotation around a couple of aces. You can build out a rotation around depth, around going 9, 10 deep. Dodgers have done a great job of this over the last decade, going really deep with quality arms. Guys where when guys get hurt, you won't necessarily have a fall off despite not having those horses at the top. That being said, it's not a sexy way to build a team. <laughs> it's hard to win the offseason that way. It could be effective, but you're kind of throwing darts at the wall. I'm hoping that some of them stop. I am going to say this. I think we've learned here you need consistent and reliable starting pitching to be a successful team in the big league. We saw that this year with Scherzer and with Verlander before they got shipped out, the fact that they had the injury issues that they had. So they've got to build a rotation that is reliable. Guys that we know can be out there, David, every fifth or, or sixth day, depending on how they're going to build this. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, to answer the question that Tony brought up, can they have a successful offseason without signing uh, Yamamoto? Obviously not, because, <laughs> because that's the only name we've heard about, right, guys, this right. whole time? I mean, the drumbeat for that has been going on for quite some time. It's, and I think it's going to be hard to get over the disappointment if they don't. You know, there's been so many eggs put in this basket to sign this guy and bring this guy to the Mets as another ace-caliber pitcher that... You know, they do have to kind of almost dust themselves off a little bit and go to plan B, C, and D. And you're going to have to. I mean, they're among the favorites to get this guy, but their whole offseason can't be built on this. Well, remember, he's 25. He's the one guy you can get this offseason that not only can he help you win next year right away, but he can help you actually for years. That is true. By the way, it is worth noting here he's won three, the equivalent of three Cy Youngs over, over in Japan.